Number one, if somebody has a weak heart in the physical world, what does he do? He monitors himself. Monitors himself. Checks his blood pressure, has a glucose problem, check his glucose. This is what you do. If you have a disease, you will make sure what is the status of the disease. And therefore, if you find yourself having the symptoms of a hard heart, well then you had better start monitoring the disease. Monitor it. See what state your heart is in. See what is your pulse. See how strong or how weak. See what is the strength of the heart and how weak is the heart and how soft is the heart. And of course this is done by many ways. This is not the time to do that. But of the ways to do this is you look at your own religious life. You look at your own how much do you do of Islam? How much is Allah Azza wa a part of your life? You look at how much you remember Allah. Basically you look at how religious you are. Because no doubt the more religious you are, the more it will be shown in your actions. So one of the pulses of the, of the state of the heart is to see how is your own personal religiosity? What is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How often do you think of Allah? How often do you turn to Allah? All of these things need to be monitored. Just like the sick person, he monitors his health. Just like the sick person will check his blood, check the blood pressure, check this, do that. Similarly, the one who sees these symptoms, th that person had better start monitoring. And this is of the first ways to start keeping this disease in check. Number two, extra nawafil. Extra deeds, and this is if you are praying the fard. If you're not praying the fard, then no doubt before you get to the nawafil, you have to make your fard solid. Our Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that nothing a servant does can draw him closer to me than doing the fard obligatory deeds. <coughs> nothing a servant does can draw him closer to me than doing the obligatory deeds. This is the most important. Then he said, and then the servant continues to co draw closer to me through the nafil, through the superrogatory, through the extra good deeds. And so increasing your actions of worship, all actions of worship will affect the heart. Number three, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We already mentioned that not doing dhikr causes the heart to become hard. And therefore the converse applies. Doing dhikr. Being immersed in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of the best ways to make the heart become whole and pure. And in fact, Allah mentions this explicitly in the Quran. Verily, through the dhikr of Allah do the hearts find tranquility. The tranquility of the heart, the softness of the heart. And that is because the dhikr of Allah is the primary food for the soul. The dhikr of Allah is the primary food that the soul is nourished on. And if we supply our soul this food, it will alhamdulillah become healthy. And if we deprive it of its food, then it will become hard. And therefore every one of us needs to see how much dhikr am I doing? How much subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar am I saying in a day? These are the primary adhkar. After the salawat, the adhkar. Before going to sleep, the adhkar. Waking up in the morning, the adhkar. This is of the most important ways that we make our hearts soft. And that is to immerse it in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in the famous hadith where the Prophet was asked, How do I get rid of this rust? How do I get rid of this rust? And he said, Bidhikrillah. Through the dhikr of Allah, that's how you polish the heart. Point number three. Or this point number four. Being in righteous gatherings, being around people of religion, birds of a feather flock together. And if you're around people who all they do is they backbite, or all they do is they diss or they curse, or all they do is they watch movies, or all they do is they talk about sports, well, what's going to happen? You also will be immersed in that culture. Whereas when you're around people who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they talk about the Quran, they talk about the Islamic ummah, who are involved with the ummah, then no doubt this will have a positive impact on you. And this is the reality as our Prophet ﷺ said, that the person follows the religion of his friends. So see who is your circle of friends. And this is of the easiest ways, brothers and sisters, if you find yourself uncomfortable in the gatherings of your own friends, you find yourself being the more religious, well, no one is forcing you to be there. Go change your friends for the sake of your deen and dunya, for the sake of this world and the next, for the sake of your family. Find a better set of friends. Friends come and go, we all know this, everyone has gone through phases of life. You don't have to stick with the same group of friends. If a group of friends are backbiting or they're cursing or they're arrogant or they're making fun of or this or that, why hang around them? Find a group of people who bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will make the heart softer. Of the vaccinations you can give, of the ways you can cure the hardness of the heart is the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Constant dua. 
Dua for anything and everything and especially dua for the heart. Allah says in the Quran, When our punishment came, why didn't they beg and turn to us in dua? But rather, walakin qasat qulubuhum. Instead of dua, their hearts became hard. So notice here, Allah is saying, why didn't they do dua? Instead, their hearts became hard. And therefore, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> is of the ways to soften the heart. Not just dua for the heart, all types of dua. Why? Because dua is the only way we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the primary means of communication. So when we communicate with Allah, we open up that window directly to Allah and the heart feels an attachment to Allah. But especially of the duas, we make dua for the heart itself. Our Prophet would regularly make dua Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala ta'atik. O oh, you who changes the hearts always back and forth, make my heart firm in your worship, in your obedience. We make specific dua to Allah for our hearts, that our hearts remain firm in this religion of Islam. Another way to inoculate our heart, to vaccinate our heart, is to constantly think of the next world and of death. And this is a topic that deserves its own khutbah. And I have given khutbahs about this concept as well. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, that none of us likes to think about death. None of us wants to think about the inevitable. Everyone, every one of us, we are aware of people who have died. The year is about to end, 2012. We're all aware of those who were with us at the beginning of the year. Now they are no longer here. Many people in this own community, every one of you knows of specific people, Right? We all hear of other people's deaths. But it never occurs to us that the time will come when the phone call will be about our own death and the people being informed will be our circle of friends. Thinking about death softens the heart. Makes you realize and prepare for that day. And the final point that we'll mention, and again the list is long, but this is time precludes me from going deeper than this. The final point, and another point that the Quran mentions explicitly linked with the heart. The final point to make the heart soft is... Reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qira'atul Qur'an. Allah mentions in the Qur'an that of the characteristics of the believers is when the Qur'an is recited, when the Qur'an is recited, their hearts, ثُمَّ تَلِينُ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts become soft. Their hearts become soft. And they turn towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, reciting the Qur'an is of the greatest ways to soften the heart. Brothers and sisters, I advise myself and every one of you that we must have, we must have a certain portion of the day that we recite some Qur'an every single day. The Qur'an is the spiritual food, just like dhikr. The Qur'an is the greatest dhikr. In fact, one of the names of the Qur'an is dhikr. Anzalna dhikr. Allah calls the Qur'an ad dhikr and we just said dhikr is the spirit of the, 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 the food of the spirit. So what is the greatest food? It is the Qur'an. And therefore, of the greatest ways to soften the heart is to have a regular routine of reciting the Qur'an. Every single day, every single one of us, we need to recite even if it is only five minutes a day, brothers and sisters. Even if it is only a few minutes a day, there has to be a daily relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for our heart to feel a little bit of that softness. Brothers and sisters in Islam, much more can be said. I have to mention one more point. I know the time is limited, but this is also an important point. Our process I'm directly linked it to a Bedouin came and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, my heart is very hard. How can I cure it? What did our process and I'm saying? He said, if you have a hard, sorry, if you wish for a soft heart, what should you do? He said, go feed the poor and wipe your head over the orphans. Go feed the poor and wipe your head over the orphans. One of the most easiest ways to soften the heart is to see what is happening to other Muslims, to be involved with musibas, with calamities.